we are back for game one of the St. Clair versus Davenport series in the College Carball Championships. Davenport in a very solid school in many, many games. I'm thinking Call of Duty, I'm thinking Rocket League. They've had their runs in Counter-Strike as well. No matter what game, no matter what squad this school's gonna put on the field, you know that it's gonna be a solid one, but keep in mind, these Saints are hot off of a reverse sweep up against University of South Florida. They're feeling hot. They're not ready for their day to end just yet. We're gonna have to see who's gonna get the better of this game one. So uh, for Davenport, it looks like we got Shane, Omen, and Bira. Yeah, Bira, Bira, however you wanna spin it there. It's back off the crossbar. Spoon's oh, got that angle, but the post once again, gonna be the bane of the Saints for today. And the Saints are just coming out on fire here, shot after shot after shot, really making Davenport work right off the hop for a minute here, and I think we already got three shots for the Saints. Christian's going to send that right back to Davenport net again, but Beera's going to stop that right above it, stop that bounce in front, make sure nothing happens off that. That's a clear out over into the Saints zone. That's a nice 50-50 that ends up going into the air. Omen's Gonna find a demo as well. Shane, perfectly set up for that one. The demo comes through, no defender to work with. 1-0 for Davenport, starting this series off with a bang. As we've seen last game, the demolitions really came through for South Florida University, and Davenport seems to be using that same strategy here after demo and a goal. Yeah, it's such a like valid strategy, right? Because even if you don't find that demo in the net, you'll find the bump most likely, which is sometimes just as solid as the straight up demo. However, always the chance for somebody to come back after that bump. Vyra saving that one as Raman tries to come in and finish off that goal there, finish off that setup. But Vyra keeping Davenport with that lead for now. The defender, Omen. Omen fighting over the ball with his teammate there. And I think they got a little bit confused. Spoon's gonna push the ball back into Davenport's end. Try and keep the pressure on. Try and get that game back evened up. That's a good little pass off that backboard. Raman has to be the one for this contest. Spoods sends it all the way off of Davenport's backboard. It's back again, and Christian gonna be the one to nail it. Those have been the textbook plays from the Saints. A quick one, two, three off that backboard. And there you go. Raman in the net, ready to bump Byra out of the way as well. Beautiful pass by Raman. Beautiful setup to bring the Saints back to an even matchup here in game one. Just yeah, about halfway through the first game. Yeah, game one, I'm realistically, I always expect game one to be fairly, e it's either fairly even for most of the game or it's a straight up 5-0, like one yeah. team clearly does not have the number on the other and clearly have to make that adjustment. But oh Ooh, my wow. Lord, Raman. What a rally, what a shot, what a reaction there to be able to know, all right, it's gonna come off that defender and just keep it going off that crossbar. Yeah, actually, Omen's gonna be the one that accidentally bought that right to the center. Set him up for the lead here in game one. That is not where Davenport wants to be. Early mistakes, early consequences. Let's hope that doesn't set the tone for Davenport here in this yeah. series. I mean, you gotta remember, Davenport falling out of that winner's bracket. Meanwhile, the Saints have are hot off of a reverse sweep. They're keeping their dreams alive today. And they're feeling confident moving in. They've had a lot of games under their belt today, a lot of time here on the field, and Davenport needs to realize that, kind of needs to respect some of this pressure as well. They've been getting pretty confident just leaving Byra back there, but sometimes you need that second defender as well. Yeah, so Byra and Omen are gonna be playing defense here, really get the ball back into the Saints end. Try and get that goal back, try and tie it up. Byra with the air dribble, gonna send, oh, he's tried to send it right down on the goal line there, but he's stopped by, I believe, Christian. Got Christian on that backboard. Good at those contestions, good at those clears to come off from the backboard, off the post. Who's gonna follow up on it? Spoods nor Christian are gonna be there as they have to make that rotation. Omen gonna be the one to get their hands on the ball. Shane kinda just ends up leaving it in dead air in the corner there. Oh, big Davenport, nice little jump scare, but Christian jump scares three defenders as they are able to make that save. 
One minute remaining. Saints still up one goal. Davenport hustling to try and make this happen, but the Saints yet to really give up too, too much on this defense. Yeah, Omen's going to put that ball back in the Saints' end, really try and get some. But there's a long ball going for long ball for Davenport's net. Almost made that connection. But Beer is going to make the dribble, and they're going to go on. Oh, Raman's actually going to stop him there. A little confused with the red paint scheme. I it's thought that was demo. a member of Davenport. Yeah, it's interesting that there are certain paints that you can use no matter which side you're yeah. on. Even though, like, you can use a, a specific blue color on the orange oh, side, or Christian. you could be Christian and just find two goals in the end of the game. Yeah, and that's awesome. Actually, purple, though. Christian is one of the ones who does like to use a lot of those, like, metallic or, like, orange colors, regardless of which side he's on. Yeah, so. I, I know there's some paint schemes where you can get away with using the other team's primary as your secondary, and that, that secondary really takes over the primary and it might confuse some of the members there. Yeah, I mean, even Shane right now has a pretty dark color scheme on his car, something you'd more attune to that blue side. However, 3-1 oh, oh. right now. Saints, you've basically locked in game one. Davenport has to find something in the next few seconds or else they're going to be down and out. Oh, it's and Omen into the net. You've got three seconds to play with Davenport. Can, sorry, can you make that zero second play can you make it happen? And it seems like that, that it's going to be their only opportunity here. They got three seconds. They got to get after the ball right away on. No, the Saints are going to turn it back into their end. Now they're just going to be playing time, trying to keep that ball in the air, try and make something happen before that ball hits the ground. But all the Saints need to do is make sure that ball hits a bounce, and they yeah. will. There That's the end of game is. one. Game one locked in for the Saints over there. It's a nice one. Centered balls from Christian. Two goals for him. Raman, of course, able to find that one as well. Ready for this next game. 1-0 up for the Saints. It's been pretty tough for them to find the lead in a lot of these series. It's been close ones to come through. But now, have to make sure you can keep this momentum going. They were able to get a solid lead onto Davenport in the end. But the problem is that... Davenport was still able to find one and find a very solid one at that. Yeah. However, even like a double Debo came through for Davenport. Saints, the one Saint left, good enough to shut them down. I believe it was Raman in that play. And Christian shut down pretty early off of a demo there as well. Omen going to be uh, replacing Flarp there from USF oh, as uh, the demo man here on the field. As seems to have found, I think, three or four already this series. Oh, wow. It's a goal line roller, and it's back out off the post. Public enemy number one today for all Rocket League players seems to be the post and the crossbar. Well, Spoods again with an awesome save. And now uh, we're really going to see what happens here in this game, game two, because there was 13 shots from the Saints. 13 shots from the Saints last game, only three from Davenport University, and it was still a 2-1 game. So if Davenport can get those shots, they might be able to get more opportunities for a connection. I think that's their biggest, their biggest problem is not getting enough shots. But honestly, it's been tough for them to really get these setups going. They often find it in front of the net, but just nobody can get that final touch. Nobody can nail it before, say, Ramen or Spoods finds a clear on that one. And then once that clear comes through, the thing is, it's usually Christian who's already deep into Davenport zone, already ready to follow up on that ball. And it just leads to such a, a smooth style of play that... Davenport has yet to adjust to in the game. A demo from Raman gonna shut down that play. Yeah, Shane had a nice carry in there, but he just wasn't able to make anything happen. Christian and Spoods are gonna play the ball in uh, Davenport's end. Try and set something up in the middle there for Raman. But it doesn't doesn't look like anything's gonna come of it. We're playing a lot of back and forth in the middle here. He's really trying to get something. Shane. But actually, Shane's gonna put that in from the other side of the court. The first bar down shot. We've actually seen land today. A great yeah. angle there from Shane. He's gonna be like, all right, maybe the crossbar is my friend today. Yeah, Everyone nice. else having a rough time, but Shane, he knows the secret of the crossbar. He found the ancient texts and he knows exactly yeah. what he needs to do. That was perfect placement by Shane there. Just a nice little lob shot. Didn't give any time for the Saints to kind of adjust to that, get in the way. They really didn't have any opportunity. Yeah, and I mean, realistically, like, a lot of a shot like that, a lot of it does come down to luck. But oh, a roller right. to just be answered right back from Raman. Another goal. Another 
Another easy goal from the Saints. No one there to grab that. Bira just missed it just by a hair. Just by a hair indeed. Three minutes left in the game and we're back to a tie game here. Last time we saw this in game one, Saints were able to find two straight. Christian looking to keep that trend going, but Omen saving it for now. Spoons is, is going to send that into the corner there and stop uh, stop anything from happening on the Davenport side. Shane's really going to try and get something going here. They know they got two and a half minutes. If they can get a goal here, it could change everything. But Christian is just not going to let that happen. Yeah, like they've still got a lot of, to both these teams, a lot of time to work with. Bira got a lot of air to work with and a lot of boost to come in from mid there. I want to check. We can really see where Bira was. Yeah, just playing that right side of mid, able to just nail the ball in that top left corner, right where you keep the peanut butter, top shelf. Yep, and Davenport's gonna come in strong, try and keep that momentum, maybe get a two goal lead, try and get a little bit more comfortable and they can just focus on defense. Yeah, Byra looking for another setup here from the top. Raman gonna contest that one in the air. That's a deep defender on Omen, but he's able to find that contestion, maybe make this rotation back. Shane's there for the play, no boost to work with, however. He's gotta hope one of his teammates can come in and maybe continue this one up. It sails right past Omen. This could be it, but look at the contestions at mid. Yeah, they're there every time. Every time to stop that ball, they're not letting it get anywhere near the net. Beaver's gonna play this hard, keep it down in the end, try and get that third goal and try and secure it. Spoods. He's gonna bounce it up. It's actually out over towards that corner. Maybe you can find one of these pinch shots teams have been loving so, so much today, but 130 left. Davenport now has the lead, but they're not letting the pressure go just yet. In fact, they're still playing, dare I say it, as risky of an offense as they were in that 1-1 setup. Bira can't find the angle, however. Three defenders, Christian's gonna knock it right back down. Shane tries to get that reset on the pressure. He's gonna ride over that goal line, hand it over to Spoods. Saints playing some great defense right now, and they have to because they cannot get the ball out. It has been shot after shot for Davenport University. They are keeping the pressure on. They're not even giving the Saints an opportunity to catch up. Yeah, trying to make these corner plays happen every time. Davenport very, very fond of sending it over to the middle from that left, whereas kind of the opposite of the Saints where they're often trying to set it up off that backboard. Omen, do you have the read on this defender? A great bump from Christian to save them for now, but you're still one goal down and you're about to hit that 30 second mark. Raman, you see Spoots up there in the net. Maybe you can bump this defender, make the play, but Shane sends it high and it's out to Christian in the corner. That was a beautiful stop by Shane. He really did just save his team there because I have a feeling that was going in if he wasn't there. Oh, 100%. You saw Raman was literally just bumping Bira back and forth in that net there. No defender is gonna make it out of that when you've got a player straight on you like that. Omen keeping these contestions alive. Nine seconds for the play. Saints, you gotta make a zero second rally here is what it's looking like as the time ticks down. They want that ball to hit ground. Tr Shane tries to send it. Raman saving it for the time being. Sets it up for the net. Shane right to the floor. That's gonna be 1-1 one, one in the series. Davenport not out just yet and showing us exactly why game one was so tight and exactly why they're able to even it out in this series. Shane and Byra to be the ones to make those plays and look at the shot count. Yeah, same same as last game, the Saints dominating the shot count. 10 shots to Davenport's, I believe, four. Yeah, Saints had four shots. Davenport was the one with 10 shots up there. Yeah. yeah that's my bad. I mixed those two up. I believe, yeah, I believe so. But it's just, it's just a tough one to try and deal with when you've got all that pressure on you. How are you supposed to take that? How are you supposed to make any momentum off of that when you're just playing defense for so, so long? We saw the rallies come through and it was some insane saves. Even if they don't count as saves on that feed, it was saves from Shane and saves from Omen that really made that last minute work for Davenport. Oh yeah, and as, as we've seen, it's gonna be the shots that matter. You can't get goals without shots. So both sides need to get as many shots on net as they can. Try and make those opportunities. Force those opportunities. To really get something going here in game three. Forcing the opportunities is a big one. Raman trying to force the ball. 
into that goal. Not able to find it. Shane, it's a pinch out towards the middle. Omen, definitely not ready for that one. I don't think anyone was ready for that angle. He's able to get this reset. Look at the flip reset on the ball. It's back down. Shane should be able to reset this around mid. Keep this pressure going. Bounce it over Spoots. Spoots get a tap on it. Now, Vera to try and make the play. Yeah, Omen's going to come through the middle, but he is going to miss. And Vera demolishes Spoots. Bringing the Saints. Oh, and Omen's going to demolish Christian too. And that's going to get two respawns back in the Saints end. Spoots is going to push the ball to the center. He's going to have a nice air dribble. He's going to try and make something happen in Davenport's end, but it's just going to end up in the corner. Shane is really not wanting anything to happen here. He knows they need to get that go-ahead goal, and they need to make something happen. Yeah, Shane really being, as much as he's not making insane clears or a crazy long lobs across the middle, what he is doing is, oh, that's a wide open net for Christian on the breakaway. You commit too hard, Davenport, and you're going to get punished for it. Saints immediately see that happening, and Christian knows he's got the boost to make that play. Wide open net for that easy splash. Going to bring that 1-0 here, a minute and 36 seconds into game three. Davenport and St. Clair tied at 1-1. Out into the corner. Davenport now playing from the behind. Has to try and just keep up what they've been doing. They've been having so many quality setups, but just haven't had that final player to really put that nail in the coffin to really find that goal to cross that goal line. Meanwhile, Christian is just feeling hot today. A pass from Spoods to the air. Christian right there to receive it and ready to cut that angle. It's just an awesome play. Awesome play by Christian. Awesome pass by Spoods. Just making it happen when it needs to happen. Get that two goal lead. Really put the pressure on Davenport with three minutes left here. Now they can just sit back, play defense, or they can get another goal and really secure themselves. Yeah, look at that triple deep, triple goalies there, triple defenders in the crease. Byra tries to get their hands on that one. Omen, it's a pass out to the corner, but Raman has really been controlling the corners in the Saints zone, not letting as much happen as they've been trying to get. Christian wants to make it a third for the game, but it goes high off of Shane. Yeah, I think the... the Davenport's really going to have to get some demolitions going, get the Saints off guard, try and get some of those tricky goals because time is running out fast and the Saints could just play time if they wanted to. Mm, the clears have been really key from the Saints here as well as just a lob from the corner. I think that was from left side half there from Spoods and Davenport. A very, a very tough goal to lose at first and then you lose another goal to a, just a solid pass from Spoods. And then goal number three is another floater like that. It's really, really going to be tough to come back in this game, especially when you're letting go realistically such careless goals as you're just getting too aggressive in this zone. It worked for you last game, but now Saints have kind of realized that they're triple committing. And you see it's Omen and Shane just racing back for this ball when realistically you should have one defender ready already on there maybe he's playing back a little bit behind that center line just a little bit into your zone so he's not chasing so so far every time oh yeah definitely they really got to work on the rotations make sure they're not leaving their net open i know they do need three goals but you don't want to need four goals that's for sure yeah, I mean, at this point in the game, yes, you have to make it risky, but it's the fact that they were doing the same thing when it was 1-0, and it's something that can just tax you in the end and really leave you behind now, as you see. It's currently a shutout still from the Saints. A demo comes through from Bira. This could be the setup they're looking for, but Raman right there for the save every single time. The Saints locked in. They are not going home today, at least not going to go home in Game 3. Yeah, with one minute left, with a 3 nothing lead from Saints here. I don't want to say it, but I think the Saints have got this one closed out. They could play their zone, play their defense strong, get those high, high, long, deep clears, play that time, and before we know it, we'll be in game four. That's the thing. It's 3-0, and it's just the way the Saints have been playing this defense as well. They don't have to worry about finding anything themselves, so they can play three-man defense yeah, you can weave past one or two defenders sometimes, but you can't weave past three, and Raman only has to weave past zero as once again, it's just those aggressive commits from Davenport as they're desperate 
to find something, but that 4-0 ought to lock the game down. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. I, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen four, four goals in Rocket League in 32 seconds, but there's a first time for everything. Oh, there is a first time for everything, but with all this time spent in Davenport's zone already, you almost need to win every single kickoff off the bat, maybe find some miracle goals off the post from Spoods, trying to find another one with a wild angle there to come through. Shane and Bira have to make this play. Bira finds the demo onto Rawman, but nine seconds left. The countdown is coming, and it's too little, too late for Davenport. Just too many goals to try and make right now, and that's going to be game three done. It's a Saints win, and it's a 5-0 Saints win after that zero-second goal from Spoons. Yeah, I just don't think the Saints, happy were, uh, Saints were happy with an even number. They wanted to make it odd. 5-0 on game three. Hoping to carry that momentum out into the next game and finish up the series. If I'm not mistaken, that was two for Spoods, two for Christian, and one for Rom in there. That being, I think it was Christian Spoods, Christian Rom and Spoods in that order in terms of goals. You see the shutout comes through. It's 2-1 now in the series. Saints looking to punch their way through this bracket. That's going to bring them to the loser's final should they win this game. Match point here in game four. Davenport backs up against the wall, but not in as tough a position as Saints were last series. You've still got that one game under your belt. You're only looking for two straight. It's not impossible. And I mean, we've seen Davenport. We know they can do it for sure. It's just, can they make the adjustments necessary? And can they stop being overly aggressive is the real question yeah that's definitely it they got to they got to play their positions they got to do their rotations they got to make sure they're not leaving their net empty handed for those long soaring goals yeah because they cannot let those easy goals in it's just the fact that the saints have already punished it so often that continuing to make the same mistake right that's that's literally the definition of insanity depending on who you ask oh. but christian once yeah. again he's these are the goals he's always going to find, and yeah. it comes off of too deep of a commit for Davenport. Yep, once again, we were just talking about that. They need to play their rotations. They need to stay in their spots, and those goals won't happen. Shane just all game hustling back to this net as three players seem to always be in that St. Clair zone. It worked for the pressure there in game one, or I think it was game two that they were able to find, but it's not going to work all the time, and this is a best of five. You have to adapt to your opponent. Davenport yet to really do that. You're still seeing, even there, Spoods, there's only one defender in front of him, and it's Bira who is forced to make that save. If he's even one millisecond passed by, it's all over. And look at that another, wide open another. net. Amazing save by Spoods, and it turns into another empty net goal for St. Clair, because once again, Davenport is overcommitting, just flying after the ball, no regard for the rest of the field. And they let another one trickle on by them. I, I think it's just too tough. Yes, there was a demo to come through. So, yes, they were a player up. But even at that point, why do you got three players in that zone to begin with? The Saints, you know they're going to punish you for that. And the Saints doing such a good job at that. Just continue punishing the mistakes of Davenport every time you see that opening. Make it happen because regardless of how it comes through, a goal is a goal. Yeah, that is. this is not the situation that Davenport wanted to find themselves in. Mm -hmm. I really think they needed to make those adjustments. They still got three and a half minutes. Uh, three and a half minutes now to score three goals. Spoods with another goal for the Saints. Seems like all by himself in the corner. No Davenport defenders to be found. I, I think the Saints are hungry, hungry for this loser's run. I mean, they've only got one more school to go through after that. They've punched their ticket to the grand finals should they find that next one. But at this point, 3-0, you found a shutout last game with a very, very similar scoreline at a very similar point in the game. I just don't see Saints giving this up right now, especially with how well they're capitalizing on Davenport's mistakes. Yeah, they're keeping the pressure on. They're not even letting Davenport out of the zone. I'd love to see a shot count right now. Can see just Christian himself has three shots alone. Yeah, I can easily see Bira. seven to eight for the Saints right oh, now. Definitely, in total. definitely. One shot for Shane, one shot for Omen. 
So not not very high shots and no shots for Beerus. So that's only two shots for Davenport to three for Christian alone. Because every time they try to get it set up, there's three players deep. One of them gets it contested or knocked off of their nose there. And it's just a, a capitalization from the Saints. It's, there's no other way to say it. It's punishing. Very punishing for Davenport. You see Shane even chasing after this ball, but he has to make that defense smart and actually slowing it down there, forcing, I believe it was Christian there, to slow it down right in front of Shane. Genius idea as it lets Bira have the time to make that rotation back and be that extra defender in the net. So starting to realize maybe we need that time for defense, but at the same time, minute 50, chunk out. All you got left is about two minutes to make something happen. Are Saints going to run away with a 3-1 victory? Keep this loser's run alive. Not even alive, but thriving. Yeah, Davenport's definitely putting the pressure on now. I think their heart starts racing. They realize we got a minute and a half. We need three goals. We need to make something happen now, or that is it for us. The thing is... 3-0 lead, the Saints, you're seeing them make these clears, you're seeing even Spoods go for a shot or two every once in a while, but realistically, they don't have to. They can just play out this clock, that's the thing, you're determined by the clock in Rocket League. It's five minutes, you gotta make the play in that time. Almost down to a minute left here as Christian sails past that defender, Raman, gonna, gonna be making this rotation back, but it might be too little too late for Davenport. Christian and Spoots really keeping that ball. It's even Davenport's end there. And now Davenport's bringing it back in the Saints' end. But I honestly, like Josh said, it's a little too late. We've got 50 seconds left. They need three goals, and the Saints are clearing it out again. They're three. doing everything they need to do to keep this game alive. Even off a three-shot straight, Raman just relaxing in the net, making all those saves happen. It's like they're reading the mind of Davenport right now. They're just one step ahead, and... Davenport, you had a great, great game in that game too where you were able to find it, but where has it gone is the question. Yeah, it seems like it's gone and forgotten because the Saints with only 19 seconds left are most definitely going to be taking game four and moving on to, I believe, the finals of the losers bracket. Yeah, it's going to be losers finals. And we do actually have the Ramen. opponent for that, I believe. Again. I'll get the update here in a sec. But sealing the deal here in game four, four, yeah. nothing. That's going to be the GGs to come through. It's going to be OSU legumes there in that losers finals. I mean, you are seeing, unfortunately, some players leaving the match here from Davenport. But... This does have to be played out for that victory, for that match reporting in the score there. And game four, gonna be done. It's a 3-1 score line. Not even needing that reverse sweep like last time. The Saints feeling good in that one. Really realizing exactly what Davenport was doing in the one game that they found to be able to find the win and just shutting it down every day of the week. Realizing, yo, they're triple committing. Oh, yeah. We can just lob them down and the net's wide open. Yeah, that, that was definitely a change of pace from the game that we've seen earlier where... It was breakneck, cutthroat, mm -hmm. save after save, contestant after yeah. contestant. But it seems like the Saints just knew what to do in this game. Their play style was just superior to to uh, the other teams. Like Davenport, like, honestly, there. yeah, sorry. Yeah. They're just they, they they matched up very well initially, and the Saints able to make those mid-series adjustments, able to take that win after the one-game loss. Now, moving in to that loser's finals, going to be facing the OSU Legumes. We're going to be back for that game. <laughs> 